Hey guys, welcome back. So it is Felicia and if you guys haven't heard on the grapevine, Rowena and I are going to be doing an extra video on the weekends for you guys. So last week Rowena did a dry and dehydrated skincare dupe. So if you haven't checked that out, then make sure you check that out. But today this is going to be kind of like my diary to clear skin because ever since I can remember, I've kind of suffered with breakouts and problematic skin and oily skin. It's not really, really bad but it has definitely been enough to cause me and give me a lot of insecurities growing up. And as we know, breakouts and you know acne have a lot to do with our internal bodies. And for me personally, like this might be TMI, but I never get my period on time, which would completely mess up my hormones and was one of the biggest reasons that my skin would just perpetually break out in different types of acne on my chin, my jaw. And it also like went onto my chest and back and like, you know, the body area, even my neck. And I really just wanted to know what to do and why this was even happening. Obviously, this is just talking from my own experience and what we researched. The sad thing is like some people can eat whatever the heck they want and they have clear, vibrant skin. Yes, they are the fairies and the pixies of the world. <laughs> they do exist. But for those of you who are like me, much more sensitive, much more reactive, very inflamed, and prone to acne, you really have to put that extra effort into reading your own body, knowing what you're putting inside you so that you can make these changes to clear your skin from within. And over the last two months, I've made little changes that have really just started to regulate my body, make the skin more clear and like naturally restore energy levels as well as kind of bring the hormones back to normal so that my period actually came two months in a row on time for the first first time in my life. Okay, so first starting off with, oh man, bittersweet, literally bittersweet caffeine. And this is really interesting because it's not something that's commonly talked about when you think of hormonal acne or breakouts. So just so you know what my routine used to be, the first thing I would drink or eat or ingest in the morning is coffee. All right. Oh my gosh, look at that guys. And then I would have one in the afternoon and I would even have one at night, like almost before I go to bed to the point where it had no effect on me. I just craved it. And that is like an insane caffeine addiction. And I think like looking back because there was so much pulsing throughout my veins and my body, it really inhibited my period from actually coming. And after doing the research, it all makes sense. Before we get into the science part of it, this is what I changed. Waking up and drinking at least one full cup of water, having one coffee a day, only in the afternoons, and making sure that if I did drink it, it wasn't on an empty stomach. Not a full on breakfast, but at least something of nutritional value in the morning so that it would actually give me energy and I wouldn't be relying on the coffee to keep me awake until 12 o'clock. And then only after that, in the lunchtime, did I have my first cup. One month later, I like got my period and normally I don't get it for like three months. It goes like three months, two months, four months. It's all over the shop. And as soon as I changed this kind of caffeine coffee addiction habit, it instantly came back again. So I was like, oh my God, what is happening? Okay, so here's the science. When it comes to caffeine, it boils down to three major things. It's your genetics, your liver, and your adrenal glands. So we watched this video with the CEO of Flow Living, her name's Elisa Vitti, and there's a specific gene in our bodies called CYP1A21A. <laughs> anyway, this is the gene that rapidly breaks down caffeine into enzymes that are then metabolized in our liver. And as you know, the liver is one of your body's 
best organs for filtering out. It's like the only organ that will really help break down the toxins in our body, right? And the thing is the majority of the world's population has a variant form of this gene, which is known as CYP1A21F. And this means that your body is slower at metabolizing the caffeine that you drink because you lack enough enzymes in the system to break all that coffee down. So when you drink more cups of coffee, just imagine how much the liver is struggling to get that out of the system. And all the caffeine is going into overwork and stripping the body of vitamin B and magnesium and a lot of other micronutrients, which are super important for a healthy body and healthy period, and especially for balancing your hormones. And then you have the adrenal glands and they're located above the kidneys, like two little mushroom caps, and they're responsible for regulating the stress hormones. And you know those times when you drink something with caffeine and then you either get like all jittery and you thought you're gonna go into some like mini panic attack, that's because the caffeine is stressing out the adrenal glands to go into a fight or flight mode. <laughs> so when all these responses are happening at once, the body reacts with inflammation. After finding that out, I was like, oh my gosh. I was like suffocating my body in so much caffeine that it probably completely screwed it up. <laughs> and okay, here's a big one. Sometimes I would drink a fourth cup of coffee and it would be decaf at night, but do not. Because actually decaf has a lot more chemicals to remove the amount of caffeine. So you're actually getting the taste of it, but also ingesting more chemicals. If you're gonna just drink coffee, drink coffee. Don't go to decaf. So you can drink caffeine. I'm not one person who's like never got, just giving up cold turkey coffee, but reducing the amount can have such a big impact. And then substituting that for like healthier alternatives, like herbal teas. For example, dandelion. So this has dandelion leaf and root. It's also got ginger and cardamom seed as well as cinnamon bark. Dandelion root is actually the go-to tea or ingredient or supplement that people facing acne can really benefit from. In that, there's also this thing called Dandy Blend for all you coffee lovers who aren't ready to completely give it up. It's it's like the flavor of coffee, but it's made with dandelion root as well as chicory root, sugar beetroot, rye, barley extracts. So all of that works together in giving you a very similar taste to coffee, but is obviously no caffeine and is much better for the body. So from that video that we watched with Elisa Vitti, she also suggested a rooibos and kukucha tea, which helps with the adrenal glands and also promotes digestion. Another alternative is burdock root tea, and and I know like Koreans love burdock root in their soups. And then ginger, I really like ginger at night as well because it's, it's like good for the heating of the body inside, especially in winter, it just feels really nice. But I think also on top of that, one of the biggest things was actually drinking water as the first thing in the morning and like prepare the body for the day. You know what I mean? So yeah, cheers on that. Now moving on to dairy. I don't even have to test this, like clockwork. If I have cheese the night before, I will have at least two pimples the next day. That's how quickly it is. Dairy obviously comes from cows and it's designed to raise their calflings, right? Little baby cows. It contains hormones and it's called IGF-1, which is an insulin-like growth factor. So these hormones directly trigger our sebaceous glands and our pores to create more sebum, which then increases the androgen. And when we have an unbalanced amount of estrogen or higher amounts of estrogen, this is actually what causes PMS symptoms. And in the video that we watched, a couple of them and even researching, PMS symptoms, a lot of them are actually myths. We're not supposed to get cramps. We're not supposed to be craving like unhealthy sugars and all that. We're not supposed to have mood fluctuations to that severity. Like in little cases, we will change, but a lot of that is because of the nutrients that we're actually lacking and because we're feeding our body the wrong types of energy, the wrong types of sugar and carbs at that point in time. Eating a diet that's 
higher and rich in progesterone before your period can actually help avoid any of those PMS symptoms. Like throughout the two months that I made all these changes, I really didn't even get cramping and the cravings towards like sugar and carbs, it, it wasn't like it's not there, but it was drastically reduced. My top milk choices, nut milks, are oat and uh, soy. Almond is a little bit too watery for my liking. It's a little bit too nutty. It changes the taste of coffee too much. Whereas oat is very like creamy and sometimes they put cashew in there so that um, it gives it more of that thicker consistency. It's slightly sweet. So that's why I really like it in coffees and also like for porridges and things like that. Then alternatives for cheese. Goat's cheese is a non-cow dairy. So it won't inflame the body body as much as if you were just like straight up mozzarella. And then also hard cheeses versus soft cheeses. The hard cheeses have less like dairy, lactose, fat content. So those are a little bit better than, you know, the soft cheeses like brie, camembert, mozzarella and things like that. Those I see instantaneous results, not results that I want. <laughs> and everything in moderation. Have your cheese, you know. Live your life, but just do it in moderation. <laughs> so sometimes when we have too much estrogen because of things like milk or other foods, you want to bring that back down. So how you want to balance that back out to a healthy equilibrium is eat cruciferous veggies. I mean, they're just dark leafy greens. Good old fashioned butter with the beans. Butter beans, butter beans, butter beans, butter beans. So yes, the most basic recipe ever, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and beans. Master chef over here. And yes, I've been making more effort into cooking my own food, which highly impacts, you know, what you put in your body. Because when you go out, you also eat a lot of oils, like canola oils, peanut oils, and all of that adds to like an inflamed body. Whereas you wanna have healthy oils like olive and avocado, um, and also, you know, your healthy greens. Other foods that you wanna start incorporating is slow burning carbs like whole grains and sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes, one of my favorites of all time, you just slice that up, chuck it in the oven, sprinkle some salt on it, garlic powder, and that's good to go. Potato wedges and they're so good. It's like soft on the inside. Mm. And foods that are rich in vitamin A as well as zinc, which is really good for acne and also the fatty foods. Um, you want nuts, seeds, fish oils, primroses is why salmon's really good because it has omega-6 and nine. So something that I found out recently is this estrogen support and it's these little capsules. This has also been something that I've incorporated in the last two months, every single day, once a day to give the hormones a little bit of help. So the ingredients is like vegetables. <laughs> This is something that I really highly recommend that you guys try as well. Cause it's just veggies, it's just veggies. Next one that really, really can affect skin is sugar and carbs. And you guys might think that they're like two different things, but it's because carbs turn into sugar and your body gets energy from different types of sugar. So for me personally, I think growing up, my mom would never let me drink like soda. The closest thing I got was like juice, but I don't even like juice all that much because it's like while I'm drinking it, I just feel terrible. Like I have this overwhelming sense of guilt. <laughs> so thank you mom for instilling that in me from a young age. But when I do want like a sugary addition to things, I use honey and maple syrup or even just like fruits to kind of add that sweetness. The reason that they're better than like refined sugars and just other sugar in general is because they're considered low glycemic, which means they won't spike your blood sugar levels like white sugar would. And they also contain nutrients like antioxidants and even zinc and potassium. And you only need
need a little bit of it for it to give that sweetened effect. You get the sweetness and you also get some nutritional value, whereas like refined white sugar has absolutely no nutritional value and it's highly inflammatory. So it's like doing you no good whatsoever. Even though it does still cause a little spike in insulin because it is sweet, it's much less and it won't cause a surge in your body. And I think that's something that you can very easily start to like phase out of. You just like, you no, know, go from two teaspoons to one teaspoon, one teaspoon to no teaspoon. No, there's two teaspoons. So if you're wondering how does sugar or how does carbs actually affect our acne or affect breakouts? You know how during the week before your period, your body's suddenly kind of like sending you all these evil vibes that you should eat like the whole loaf of bread or just like run to the nearest donut place. You know you shouldn't, but the urge just overtakes you and you turn into the cookie monster, basically. But the reason that your body is actually signaling these cravings is because you're not feeding it the nutrients that it actually needs to keep running throughout that period of time. So like week by week, the body actually shifts and changes and your diet and what you put inside needs to also accommodate to what the body needs. So when you're starving yourself and you're not actually feeding the body like, you know, veggies and the right grains and the right types of sugars, then your brain is like, give me sugar and then that's why you think you have these cravings when you eat those types of foods you're actually causing the insulin to rise in your body which then causes the inflammation as a whole to rise and then that triggers once again breakouts because of the sebum production in our sebaceous glands so it all actually ties in together and once you eat those foods you're actually starving your body of the actual nutrients that it needs like complex carbs or you know slow burning carbs and whole wheat um, and vegetables and things like that over the last couple of months instead of like white bread i've actually been eating a lot of still cut oats <laughs> it might sound like the most boring thing ever but it's actually delicious <laughs> and oats are rich in fiber antioxidants it's got nutrients like potassium and zinc and vitamin b6 that we mentioned before and Oat bran or still cut oats are way better because they're not processed. So the whole kernel is still there and you get all the nutrients from the kernel. And also it's high in fiber, which will help, you know, deuces. Deuces! <laughs> it is right, fibers for deuces. Okay, let's drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> So that's basically, in a nutshell, my first like few months and the changes that I've made. I highly, highly, highly recommend that you guys try some of this, maybe do it for a month and just like challenge yourself if you are kind of going through cystic acne. I know a lot of dermatologists aren't going to tell you to just change your diet and they'll probably just offer you like really drying medication and topical treatments. What you really wanna try and test out is if you can kind of affect your body in positive ways so that you don't need to take these things and you don't need to spend a lot of money because making these changes actually is not expensive. You're buying tea. You're buying tea, bruh. <laughs> So yes, I recommend that you try, swap out some alternatives, give it maybe a month to see if your body adjusts. And if not, you can start incorporating other things and then your skincare will then actually be able to work its magic. Let me know your experiences or what you guys have tried in the comments below, because I think as a community, we should all share our tips and tricks, especially dealing with acne since it is such a confusing thing terrifying thing confusing thing so yeah hopefully you guys learned something and i'll see you in the next episode bye Bing.